My name is Danny Bowman, and I'm a recent graduate of UNC Chapel Hill, and I study low frequency sounds in the atmosphere using high altitude balloons, in this case specifically solar powered hot air balloons, which rise up to uh, about 13 miles in the sky from solar power alone. What I'll be discussing today is how I reach a decision whether or not to launch based on what the atmosphere is like on that given day. The part that I'm concerned about is the troposphere and the stratosphere, which is the two lowest layers. Here in North Carolina, one of the biggest problems we face is that the winds blow east in the troposphere, which is about 10 miles to uh, ground surface. As a consequence, on almost any day that I launch one of these balloons, they fly for about 12 hours. They're almost guaranteed to go in the ocean. What I'm looking at here is actually um, all the wind profiles from an altitude of sea level all the way up to 30 kilometers above the ground. And this is how the winds work here in North Carolina. From zero to 10 kilometers up, uh, actually even all the way up to 20 under most cases, the winds in the troposphere blow east. So this is north, east, south, west. In the summer though, the stratospheric winds above 20 kilometers blow west. So I know that if I can bring my balloon up to 20 kilometers or so, I can actually move it back west and keep myself out of the ocean. The problem is these balloons, we don't really know how they fly too well. We only have one flight under our belt at this point, so I can't guarantee it. So I tend to be extremely conservative because I don't want to lose my payload in the ocean. I've written a few software codes that allow me to make a decision whether or not I want to try and launch. And first of all, what I do is I look at the wind predictions for the next few days. And this is um, running about every six hours. First here on May 1st, we have a strong wind blowing east. And then once we get to above 20 kilometers or so, the stratospheric winds are blowing west. So remember, this is east, this is west. So I know that in that case, if I could get a balloon high enough, it would probably go west. But the, str the winds are so strong in the east that I'd probably never, uh, never make it back to land, even if I did get it drifting back westward. So I use this as kind of a ballpark figure to understand, OK, what days look OK. And then I uh, built an actual flight model based on the one other successful solar balloon flight we've had, which gives me a direct estimate of, of where the balloon will go. And this, uh, this triangle here is the launch site in Chapel Hill. These red lines are different estimates of the balloon ascent rate as it ascends up. And then it levels off around 20 to 22 kilometers, or around 13 miles. And over the next 12 hours, drifts in several different directions depending on the final altitude. At sunset, the solar balloon loses its energy and it starts to descend, which is this green path here. And these large green dots are the estimated impact sites. So for example, you can see that um, there is no real trajectory or no real day um, in the next week or so where we could reliably launch a balloon and have it not land in the ocean. Because these models are, are very rough estimates, I would not feel safe unless all the impact sites were actually several, at least 100 kilometers away from shore. And um, as you can see that on uncertain days, for example, um, you would land several hundred kilometers offshore in the best case. So I use this to kind of plan my coming week and say, OK, can I launch it all? Now, provided there's a chance that I can launch, then I have to understand, are the ground conditions really amenable to a solar balloon flight? Meaning, obviously, the sun has to be out. So it has to be after dawn, and there can't be any clouds. And I need about an hour to two hours of cloud-free conditions to make sure my balloon ascends above cloud level. And I also need to make sure that the ground winds are low. And by low, I mean hardly even perceptible because solar balloons are large and delicate, and even the slightest gust of wind can cause them to um, either not take off or run into something and be destroyed. So I have, using the, uh, the NOAA high rate rapid refresh model, it runs hourly out to about 16 hours. I can actually tell, for example, um, 
what the, which direction the winds are going and how fast they're going from an hourly prediction all the way out to 16 hours in the future. So I'll look at this at the night before and I'll say, is tomorrow morning reasonable? Is there no cloud cover? Are the winds low? And if so, then I'll wake up that day. I'll check it again. If conditions still hold, we'll, uh, we'll take the balloons out and, and try and launch them. So the balloon launches in general are complicated. Um, they tend to be moving targets in that a day may look good until, until um, even 10 minutes before launch and the wind conditions deteriorate. So with solar balloons, because they have the additional criterion of clear skies, um, I've had to wait several months for an actual opening, which is why I probably won't be launching here in Chapel Hill at all, because in the next two weeks, I don't believe the weather is going to be sufficient to allow a successful flight that won't terminate in the ocean.